in this video I just want us to understand the seriousness of the times that we are living in. This video is talking about the Mississippi River is drying up and of course the red horse is responsible for severe drought. Since the making of this video we have had a lot of rain and the Mississippi River is filling up again. However, um, drought can happen at any time and when it does this is the result. So let's go ahead and let's watch the video. The Mississippi River is drying up. Water levels are approaching record lows. Barges are getting stuck on sandbars in unprecedented numbers. Many ports and docks no longer have water deep enough for commercial boats to safely reach them. And this is a problem for the whole country. The Mississippi River, a lot of people just think of it as this beautiful, large, historic river in the middle of the country. But really, it serves as a transportation highway for a lot of industry. The river is a critical shipping route for agriculture, oil, and building materials. And the Mississippi watershed, which includes all the creeks, streams, and lakes that feed into the Mississippi River, is the largest in the U.S. Farmers in Iowa, they harvest their soybeans and they put them on barges and send them down to the port below New Orleans, and then it's sent to China. Chemicals are processed in Louisiana and sent upriver to the Ohio, to factories in Pittsburgh. The central part of this country thrives in part on industry moving goods and services up and down the river. October is traditionally a month of low water on the Mississippi, but this year the river's water levels are approaching lows not seen since 1988. And if that's the case, uh, the river at certain points is just going to shut down for, for commercial traffic. The water has gotten so low that a shipwreck was exposed along the banks of the river in Baton Rouge, Louisiana earlier this month. Archaeologists believe it sank in 1915. In recent weeks, there have been over 20 blockages on the river and backups of thousands of barges per day. When a barge gets stuck on a sandbar, it's a real expensive mess. Another barge has to come. You have to bring equipment to remove that material and put it in another barge to the point where it will float enough so that it can get off the, the sandbar. In some cases, the towboats, which pull dozens of barges each, have hit sandbars so hard that the barges they're towing disconnect. And that's dangerous for bridges and other boats. River boat cruises have... I just want to say right here that this is an image of a true slave ship. We did not come from Africa over here to North America, we were already here. We are, black people are, the indigenous of America, North America, okay? There were 16 differing nations within the borders of North America, all black human, okay? So these types of ships were the ones that took slaves or captives from one state to another state in America's vast river systems. This have also halted due to low water levels. Industry leaders say if water levels stay this low or get even lower, the tourism industry will take a massive hit. So what's causing the river to dry up? It just did not get enough rain this year, particularly in the upper Ohio. The red horse is causing the rivers to dry up. The red horse is the son of God. Remember, the red horse is one of the four horses of the apocalypse. Ohio River Valley. Normally, this is hurricane season in the south. Some hurricanes will plow into the United States and then become enormous rainstorms that go up into the Ohio River Valley and dump a lot of rain. That didn't happen this year. And industries that rely on the river to transport goods don't have many alternatives. It's not as though a farmer can just run to the railroad and that solves the problem. The rail system is so pressed right now and they have labor shortage issues, they have capacity issues that they're running into. But sticking with the river will be costly for farmers. Normally, shipping along the Mississippi River is the cheaper option. But with fewer boats and barges able to transport goods, prices have shot up. 
For example, the cost of sending a ton of corn, soybeans, or other grains from St. Louis to southern Louisiana has jumped over 380% since October 2021. The fall harvest season, which usually peaks in October, is the busiest time for agricultural products. If you can't get a rail line out, your soybeans are just sitting in an open field. I mean, a lot of farmers are hesitating to even harvest right now. But if there, let's say there are massive rainstorms and your soybeans are just sitting out there, that could really, really, really be disastrous. This disruption along the river comes at a time when the war in Ukraine has prompted huge demand for American agricultural products. And farmers were very excited. They can't get their stuff to market. They can't get it to market, not easily. They can't get their stuff to market. They can't get it to market, not easily and not cheaply. Over the last few weeks, the U.S. Coast Guard has imposed restrictions on the depth that commercial boats and barges can sit in the water and on the number of barges that tows can pull. Both actions are to try to stop barges and boats from getting stuck. But industry leaders say it's not enough. There's no real answer except for the rain. No real answer except for the rain. There's hope that beginning around December, rain will start to fall in the Ohio River Valley to an extent where it'll start to bring that water back down to the Mississippi and things will get better. If not, we're all in a lot of trouble. This is the story of a river which has formed a nation, but also one which brought it to the brink of disaster. At over three and a half thousand kilometers long, the Mississippi flows right through the heart of America. It has brought great wealth to the country, making it the richest nation on earth, but great suffering and hardship too, making it in many ways the most impoverished. Is also a river which rocked a nation. One, two, three, and... The blues, rock and roll, gospel and jazz, they all flowed into America on the muddy waters of the Mississippi and out again to the rest of the world as a revolution of song. Stars, spangles, and suffering. The Mississippi made America what it is today. Thanks for watching the video. I'm going to stop it there. If you are interested in seeing these videos um, in their entirety, um, this last one is the Mississippi, the river that formed a nation, and it's from uh, Tracks. Uh, I think it's Tracks and Travel. Um, before that, we saw some footage from N NBC uh, and also Wall Street Journal. So thank you for watching, and until next time, have a blessed day.